Can sport increase our self-esteem? Well, one experiment measured self-esteem of 10 people on three different time points and used repeated measures ANOVA to answer this question. So let's learn how to produce this statistically rich plot using only one simple command and how to interpret all these results. For that, let's take self-esteem data from the Ethereum package and gather all three time points into one column, so that our time points become a variable on the x-axis of the plot and our self-esteem scores become our variable for the y-axis of the plot. For repeated measures, the data needs to be sorted, so that the first observation of the first time point pairs with the first observation of other time points. If our data is sorted, we are ready to compute the test. And the best way to compute repeated measures ANOVA, in my opinion, is the ggWithinStats function from ggStatsPlot package, which needs only four arguments. First, our data, which is d, then x as grouping variable time. Y will be the scores of self-esteem, and we choose the parametric type of statistical approach, which tells ggWithinStats to conduct repeated measures ANOVA. Such simple command results in this statistically rich and publication-ready plot. Now let's interpret the results. F statistics and degrees of freedom were previously used to get p-values. But since modern statistical software always report p-values, we can safely ignore them. The p-value helps to test the hypothesis, where null hypothesis says that sample means are similar, or, to be more exact, that the differences between pairwise samples are equal to zero, while the alternative hypothesis says that sample means differ, or, in other words, that differences between pairwise samples are not equal to zero. Our very low p-value shows a very strong evidence against the null hypothesis in favor of the alternative hypothesis that sample means are different. That tells us that exercise significantly increases self-esteem over time, which is good to know. But how strong is the effect of sports on self-esteem? P-value cannot tell that. A p-value only tells you that there is an effect from training, but not how strong this effect is. Fortunately, GD within stats provides partial omega squared with 95% confidence intervals as the measure of the effect size for repeated measures ANOVA, which shows that training effect of 0.81 is large. Moreover, GD within stats also provides a Bayesian effect size, namely the coefficient of determination R squared with 95% highest density intervals. R squared shows the explanatory power of our model, and since R squared goes from 0 to 100%, the explanatory power of 82% in our model is huge. Or, if we interpret R squared as the effect size, our effect is substantial. If that's not enough, we can have a look at the bias factor, which is conceptually similar to the p-value. Our bias factor of minus 20 indicates a decisive evidence for the alternative hypothesis that training does increase our self-esteem, which is in line with the frequency statistics on the top of the plot. Now, both bias factor and p-value tell us that differences between time points exist. However, they don't show between which time points exactly. That's why we need to compare every time point to every other time point pair wisely. By the way, our two global tests are often called with the strange name Omnibus test, while the pairwise tests between time points are sometimes described in the dead Latin language as post hoc, which means after the event, in plain English. I really think that those unnecessary names make statistics more complicated than it is. Anyway, GD within stats automatically knows that we need pair T tests for repeated measures ANOVA, automatically conducts those tests and displays p-values, and even corrects p-values for multiple comparisons without any additional code. How cool is that? However, if we want to, we can easily customize our plot by using either additional arguments within the function or arguments from ggplot2 package outside of it. For example, if you found outliers in your data, you can display them on the plot and use a robust ANOVA to minimize the effect of outliers. 
Here again, the function automatically uses correct pairwise tests for every Omnibus test and corrects p-values for multiple comparisons with a whole method, which you can easily change to a more famous Bonferroni correction for multiple comparisons, but I wouldn't recommend it because Bonferroni correction is too conservative and we could miss some interesting result. Then, if you want to display not only significant, but all comparisons, if you want to hide either frequentists or Bayesian statistics, or even both, you can easily do that and much more. Just ask R about GD within stats function and try some things out. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Now, the last thing is important. Please check both the sphericity and normality assumptions. Otherwise, you'll choose a wrong test and either miss a discovery, having a wrong big p-value, else a call type 2 error, or you'll find some nonsense, having a wrong small p-value, else called type 1 error. Repeated measures ANOVA need sphericity, where sphericity simply means that data spread inside of the groups is similar. Variance is important because the name of our test, ANOVA, is actually the abbreviation of the analysis of variances. However, since most of the real-world data have different variances, GD within stats already accounts for sphericity by default. ANOVA also needs the data to be normally distributed or bell-shaped, but often compares a lot of groups, so that checking normality of separate groups for usual ANOVA or differences between those groups for repeated measures ANOVA might be cumbersome. The AUV Easy function from AVEX package allows to easily check both assumptions. First, it conducts mostly test for sphericity and automatically corrects p-values of Omnibus test. Secondly, instead of checking the normality of thousands of groups, we can check the normality of the residuals of our ANOVA model, where all groups are already included. We then decide whether we stay with the parametric repeated measures ANOVA, if residuals are normally distributed, or go to the non-parametric Friedman test, if residuals are not normally distributed, which is a completely different story.